Hi, this is Lucid and this video is all about how I tested the video editors. Now the first thing I've got to go into is the platform because this provided the constant and the means to benchmark one video editor to another. Then of course I've got to go into the video editors because some of these actually impose constraints. Then I'm going to go into my requirements and what I expect from a video editor. Because requirements are a personal thing, I'm going to break down my requirements and here's the flow. The first thing I'm going to test is the render process because I believe in why invest so much time in a video editor if the video editor cannot render that project into a quality product. Now what is a quality product to me? Well it must be able to render the project into an MPEG-4 file so as I can test it to the standards. Now MPEG-4 belongs to the H.264 standard so that's what I'm going to use and it will also form a major part of my requirements so if it fails this then I will discontinue trying to test that video editor and move to the next one. But if it pass, that is when I've got the confidence to actually go into the editor process or the editor workflow. And here, how I'm going to test the video editor is for any given task that I want to do, I want to find the workflow to be intuitive and easy to use. And I want all the various components to make that workflow happen, collaborate in a nice tidy fashion. What I don't want to be is frustrated with the video editor to do the most simplest of all tasks. So essentially, my requirements is looking for a balance between the render process and the editor workflow or process. If I get that balance, then I'm going to be happy and that becomes a candidate for what I would call a quality product. Furthermore, not only is it good for me and the way I can find out what video editor suits me, if you follow the work process and you see all the other video editors, then you could find the one that most likely suits you. Moving on, let's look at the platform. The ASUS ET2300 all-in-one PC is the platform that I chose for all the 17 video editors. Now, the reason why I picked this platform is it has some pretty good uh, processor and a pretty good graphics unit, but also came at a nice price. So let's dive into the various aspects of this platform. And the most obvious place to start is the heart of the platform, which is the CPU. Now the ASUS platform uses the i7, which is a quad core. Each core has two threads of execution, and a thread is also known as a logical CPU. So technically you have eight logical CPUs. Now on a software only rendering, I expect the workload to be balanced across all of these eight logical CPUs. But some video editors actually make use of hardware acceleration. Now I want to know if it makes use of the i7 properly, which means it's going to use the HD4000 or otherwise known as QuickSync 4 for the rendering, or will it go to the uh, graphics card? In this case, it's a NVIDIA GT630M and use the GPU on board to do the rendering, which means it's over the PCI Express. This leads to the next requirement, which is build time and platform efficiency. Is it actually more faster to use those eight logical CPUs and do software rendering? Or could it be better to use the HD4000 and the QuickSync technology? Or could it be better to actually go to the NVIDIA device and use the GPU over the PCI Express? Now that could give me my build time, but platform efficiency is also looking at that build time plus, does it run on batteries? Or will it require something more substantial like running off the Earth's core or something silly like that? Because if that's the case, then it's not platform efficient. When I perform the benchmark on this uh, platform, the green bars represent the ASUS. Now it's big in the right areas, which is CPU mark, memory mark, and GPU mark. So I would say the ASUS platform is very good for video editing.